we will continue our discussion on the nuclear force today. So, um, let us um, recap what we did in the last lecture. We discussed the deuteron specifically its magnetic dipole moment and the electric quadrupole moment and we saw that uh, the magnetic dipole moment of the deuteron arises due to the nuclear uh, the spins of the nucleons and also due to the orbital angular momentum of the nucleons inside the deuteron. And uh, experimentally uh, it is found that orbital angular momentum L equal to 0 state is predominant in deuteron or deuteron is predominantly in L equal to 0 state about 96 percent of the time it is in that state and 4 percent it is in the L equal to 2 state. And the quadrupole moment that is electric quadrupole moment uh, as measured um, to be 0.00288 E barn. A barn is uh, 10 power minus 24 centimeter square just to remind you. All right. So, today uh, we will discuss the nuclear nucleon scattering. The, we are uh, basically interested in trying to understand the nuclear forces looking at a different uh, systems, nuclear systems and the processes. So, deuteron which is a simple, which is one of the simplest bound states of the nucleon to nucleons bound state a neutron and a proton and a study of the properties of this deuteron will give a lot of inf lot of information about the um, nuclear force but uh, that will not be enough for example uh, the in uh, we saw that in deuteron neutron and proton are in a parallel spin state and we don't have any bound state with uh, anti parallel uh, or spins align anti parallel to each other for example. And if we want to study the nuclear force spin dependence of the nuclear force okay, with uh, anti parallel spins uh, uh, details about that etcetera, we need to actually go into uh, different systems. Uh, since we do not have any other two nucleon bound states, we rely on something else some other process which is basically scattering of the nucleon or nucleon. So, we basically we will bring this one nucleon near the other one another one say a proton is brought near a neutron. You can have actually a, a proton static also like you can have a hydrogen gas in a uh, as a target and neutrons with some kinetic energy can be sent to this target and then study the system to study what happens what is the behavior of the neutrons when they encounter encounter the protons. So, such uh, scattering studies uh, reveal a lot about the proton neutron and proton proton and neutron neutron interactions and their forces force uh, the uh, strong nuclear force between them. So, let us uh, look at some simple uh, basic um, prop, um, ideas. Uh, of the nuclear nucleon scattering here n n n stands for either proton or neutron. So, for a low energy systems if we are uh, having a small kinetic energy compared to the mass of this uh, say for example, a few MeV up to a few MeV uh, kinetic energies because the mass of the neutron is about 1000 MeV a few MeV can be considered as a non relativistic region. So, in such cases uh, what will dictate the equation I mean the scattering process is the Schrodinger equation basically. So, the Schrodinger equation in spherical polar coordinates is what we have uh, written down here. So, it has uh, the psi which is basically the wave function that represents the particle in uh, the nucleon and uh, it is in principle uh, in general a function of all the three spherical polar coordinates r theta and phi. Okay. And um, there is a potential V which is basically the nuclear potential that uh, will cause the scattering to happen or the cause the interaction to happen. Scattering is basically like you have a proton somewhere 
and say for example, a neutron comes near that and then scatters off to some directions and this is the basically the neutron proton for example. And when the neutron comes near the proton, it sees the nuclear potential which we denote by V and uh, to understand the um, nuclear scattering, uh, we need to actually have uh, some model potential. So, we will take a simple model potential which is basically a square well potential, a three dimensional square well potential which is actually spherically symmetric. So, we will consider the potential V r to be um, some value V negative V 0 for small r up to some radius uh, r 0 and beyond which it is equal to 0. So, with this potential we will actually consider the um, equation Schrodinger equation and then again we will uh, um, separate the variables by uh, defining um, psi the wave function as product of three uh, functions which are of functions of variables r, theta and phi separately and only functions r is a function capital R is a function only of the variable r, theta is a function of uh, the variable theta, phi is a function of the azimuthal angle phi okay. and time similarly is separated from the spatial part of this one and um, from the equation easily it is uh, seen that the form of the time dependence is exponential minus i e over h cross time t. And now, um, the radial part of the wave function the is uh, we will uh, rewrite as u over r another function u and this u will now satisfy uh, the equation minus h cross over 2 m d square u over d r square plus v plus l into l plus 1 h cross square over 2 m r square u e u where um, so this is the equation Schrodinger equation satisfied by the by the radial part wave function. Here l is the angular momentum quantum number and let us say we want to concentrate on uh, a particular l value. And so, we will stick to L equal to 0 case and in that case uh, solutions we will look at the solutions. See looking at the equation Schrodinger equation we have V non 0 up to R is equal to R 0. So, for that part we and we will consider again energy to be larger than or energy to be positive because we here we are talking about the scattering of uh, electron or sorry a scattering of neutron over a proton and in that case a electron so the neutron incoming neutron has kinetic energy and uh, we will assume that the elect total energy is larger than the potential and so it is positive there. This gives us the solutions of the equation as u 1 equal to some constant a times sin of k 1 r plus some another constant b cos k 1 r for the region r smaller than r 0 and a very similar thing for uh, r larger than r 0, but now we have another k, uh, wave vector k 2 and so the coefficients c 2 and b 2 can be different are in general different from a and b respectively. Okay. So, k 1 and k 2 are given in terms of E and uh, V 0. So, for region R less than R 0, we have the potential non 0 and we have an expression for the uh, wave vector in this fashion, which is equal to under root 2 m E plus V 0 over h cross square and k 2 we do not have any potential, the potential is 0 in that region and therefore, we have um, this to be 2 m E over h cross square under root. For the wave function to be uh, finite as r goes to 0. Okay. So, we have the potential let me draw the potential again. So, we have the potential starting from 0 some non 0 potential minus v 0 
and it is equal to 0 from r equal to r 0 onwards. And we want for the region 1 where u 1 is the solution r tending to infinity we have to include the point r equal to 0 as well. So, as r tends to 0 if we want the solution to be a finite solution we need to keep b equal to 0. Why? Because the wave function psi r now if we are actually considering uh, l equal to 0 solution then the angular part will only give some kind of a overall constant we will neglect that for the time being. So, the total wave function is essentially r apart from the time dependent part which is again uh, trivial and we will not write it here and this in terms of u is u over r and this then because of u 1 it is for the region of interest near r equal to 0 it is a sin k 1 r over r plus b cos k 1 r over r. So, we know the limit of going to 0 sin k r over r is equal to sin k 1 r k r is equal to k 1 which is finite no problem, but if we take limit the second term limit r going to 0 of cos k 1 r over r this is going to be infinite. So, if we want uh, the wave function to behave properly as r goes to 0 then we cannot take the second part or b cos k 1 r as a solution as part of the solution. So, we will have to take b equal to 0. So, we will consider that and there are other bound the other boundary uh, is um, r equal to 0 sorry r equal to r 0 where the potential actually drops down to 0. Okay. So, here we have the boundary condition u 1 r 0 equal to u 2 r 0 that is the boundary that is one of the boundary conditions. The other boundary condition is the derivative of u 1 with respect to r at r equal to 0 is equal to the derivative of u 2 at r equal to 0. So, they should be equal. So, these are the two boundary conditions and then this gives us 1 c 2 uh, sin k 2 r 0 plus d 2 cos k 2 r 0 equal to. Now, we have only one term which is a sin k 1 r 0. So, there and this is from equating u 1 and u 2 at r equal to 0 and when we take the derivative that will bring out k 2 here and then you have c 2 sin will give you cos after differentiating. So, cos k 2 r 0 plus no minus k 2 d 2 sin k 2 r 0 and this should be equal to k 1 a cos k 1 r 0. So, these are the two boundary conditions. Now, now um, let us uh, uh, redefine to make it in a slightly nicer form we redefine c 2 equal to c some constant cos delta and d 2 equal to c times sin delta some delta 0 let me take it as delta 0. So, this will give the boundary conditions to be c sin k 2 r 0 plus delta 0 equal to a sin k 1 r 0 okay and k 2 c cos k 2 r 0 plus delta 0 equal to k 1 a cos k 1 r 0. This will give if you divide one by the other that or the second one by the first one then that will give you k 2 
cos by sin is cot. So, cot k 2 r 0 plus delta 0 equal to k 1 cot k 1 r 0. Okay. So, in principle we can find out um, this delta 0 from non k 1 and k 2. K 1 and k 2 are given in terms of E and uh, V 0 and uh, suppose we know also the range of the potential R 0 from other data or other experiments or the other computations and then in principle uh, we can invert this to get delta 0. Now, uh, let us look at it a little more detail like we have we had the incident wave function psi in as a sin k r exponential minus i omega t omega is the frequency which is e over h cross. Okay. So, if we consider some uh, potential scattering some uh, uh, some particle scattering over or a wave function quantum mechanical wave function scattering um, by a, a potential at the scattering center then we can in principle think about the analyze the scattering in this fashion we have um, incoming wave which let us write down as a sin k r e power minus i omega t where now r is the radial uh, distance from the scattering center. So, this actually I can write down as a over 2 i k sin k r I will write in terms of the exponential as i k r minus e power plus minus i k r over r over 2 i into e power i omega t a over r this over r. We had a u with a sin k r and in the spherical part of that uh, the wave function we have u by r which is a by uh, r sin k r e power minus i omega t. Uh, and then that can be rewritten in terms of exponentials as a over 2 i k e power i k r over r minus e power minus i k r over r. Now, you can ask the question uh, what happens when a particle comes or wave function like this comes and encounters this um, scattering per uh, center. Okay. So, here actually uh, in this way of writing this plane wave uh, this has two parts 1 e power i k r over r which is actually called a spherical wave which is in this case uh, no in general it is actually a an incoming it corresponds to the incoming a spherical wave and mm, minus k i k r is the incoming one e power i k r over r is the outgoing spherical wave. We will not go into how exactly we arrive at this conclusion, but essentially we will have to look at uh, the e power i omega t the evolution of this and then we will see that uh, for uh, physical from physical arguments we can come to the conclusion that e power minus i k r over r corresponds to the incoming um, wave incoming meaning coming towards the center um, okay. and uh, e power i k r corresponds to outgoing it is going towards the uh, away from the scattering center. So, two spherical waves and general scattering theory argument uh, we will say that uh, uh, well when the scattering happens and uh, when we look at what is the resultant wave after the scattering then we have some psi r which is very similar to the in incident uh, wave, but with a slightly changed outgoing spherical wave. Okay. The incoming spherical wave part remains the same and the outgoing spherical wave actually picks up a phase beta we denote that by beta here. Right. 
So, this is the only thing that can that happens when uh, we have scattering of a quantum mechanical wave function like this. Uh, for then e, this particular thing from this angle when we look at the wave function that we had written down which we had obtained using the square well potential and the scattering of the square well potential on the scattering of the square well potential we had written down this as c over r sin k 2 r plus delta 0. Okay. This is essentially equal to or you can write now this one as e power i k 2 r plus delta 0 divided by r. Mm, so, r I am taking inside. So, it is c minus e power minus i k 2 r plus delta 0 divided by r by 2 i of course and the time dependence is also taken away. There is exponential minus i omega t which is always there. We are just not writing that here. Now, this can again be written as c over 2 i e power i k 2 r plus 2 delta 0 over r minus e power minus i k 2 r over r. Okay. But what is left out is exponential minus i delta 0. So, I have taken uh, exponential minus i delta 0 out of this two terms and now this is in the form like um, this compare this with psi equal to c over sorry earlier we had written it as a over 2 i k okay, e power minus i k r plus beta plus i k 2 i minus divided by r e power minus i k r over now this tells us that we have if we identify beta equal to 2 delta 0 and c or a as uh, k c e power minus i delta 0, then we have uh, the earlier expression in the same form as the general expression. And now, once you have the wave function psi like this, okay, so in this fashion, so we have uh, let us say let me write it again uh, psi incident is equal to a over 2 i k e power i k r over r minus e power minus i k r over r. Okay. And after scattering we have a over 2 i k e power Mm, a over 2 i k e power minus i delta 0 e power i k r plus beta minus e power minus i k r over r. And if I now consider the scattered wave function as psi minus take away the incident wave function from this that will amount to be a over 2 i k okay, e power 2 i should have written it i 2 delta 0 minus 1 e power i k r over r. And now, now there is uh, we can write down the probability current corresponding to these two psi j uh, the psi in and psi out and I will uh, leave it as an exercise which I will spell out explicitly at the end of the lecture. We, 
So, you can work it out it corresponds to this h cross over 2 m i psi star dou by dou r psi minus dou psi star dou r psi and for the psi in this is equal to h cross over m k r square mod a square and corresponding to the scattering or scattered wave function it is h cross over m k r square a square sin square delta 0. Okay. So, this sin square delta square part is basically the difference between the initial uh, incoming current and the outgoing or the scattered current. Now, what does this mean actually? How do we actually physically understand this? So, okay, in the scattering, we have uh, let us say we want to understand this um, uh, in terms of some physical quantities. So, let us say what is happening, let us consider some kind of a classical hard ball scattering. Okay. So, if we have a beam of incident particle and then encountering some kind of a hard ball, part of it hits this surface of the ball and then some of it will go into a scattered, scattered into some region and something else other things will scatter into other regions. So, let us focus on some particular reg, uh, region say let us consider some small area of cross section cross section denoted by d sigma. So, if j incident is the incoming current that is the flux of the particle coming in number of particles crossing unit cross section in unit time. So, this if I multiply by some cross section d sigma that will give me the number of particle crossing that area in unit time. So, this many number of particle let us say scatters off into the region here okay, into a solid angle d omega. I uh, presume that you are all familiar with what is mean by um, solid angle. So, the area corresponding to d omega is if it is r distance away from the scattering center or the scattering the ball then uh, area corresponding to this is r square d omega. So, if j scattered is the number of the scattered the current or the flux of the particle which is scattered into the scattering solid angle d omega, then the number of particle in the area r square d omega will be j s c. So, suppose we assume that the particle which are crossing d sigma cross section scatters into solid angle d omega at some angle theta and phi. In that case, so this is not a good way of writing it. So, let me do that again. So, this is the distance r, this is at an angle theta and I do not want to complicate the diagram by writing also the azimuthal angle, but there is that azimuthal angle as well involved there. Now, we can define or rewrite this if we know j s c and j in okay, and if we know what is the solid angle the detector for example, covers then we can get the d sigma from here or looking we can uh, from an experiment from a scattering experiment like this we will be able to say for a detector of d omega um, solid angle kept at a distance r from the scattering center if j c is the current or the flux of the particle that it receives okay, and j n is the incident flux then those particles would have gone through this d sigma cross section right. 
So, this is the kind of uh, physical um, interpretation that we can give from here uh, considering or uh, comparing the two currents. And in quantum mechanics, we can actually define again d sigma as j c of the probability current and j in is the uh, probability of the incident particle times r square d omega as the cross section or differential cross section. And for a particular particle or a wave function corresponding to a particular particle, this will be interpreted as the probability for a particle to scatter into solid angle d omega when it encounters a potential which we have considered. All right, so, this is the interpretation that, it will, that we will give uh, here and uh, now in our case we have d sigma equal to j c is known, j in is known. Therefore, putting it together we have say j s c over j in r square d omega corresponds to some or equal to sin square delta 0 over k square. And if we want the total probability of scattering, we have to uh, integrate d sigma over d omega all right this is basically d omega as well here into d omega so that is essentially equal to uh, integral sin square delta 0 over k square d omega since this quantity integrand does not depend on theta or phi we have 4 pi over k square sin square delta 0 as our total cross section. Remember, we have considered L equal to 0 case, which is actually a spherically symmetric situation. So, that is why we have uh, this result. If we take some other L value, then we will not get such spherically symmetric situation and we will have uh, d sigma over d omega as a uh, depending as a fu function of theta and phi in general. All right, that we have some idea of what is the scattering, a nuclear nucleon scattering in particular. Uh, let us um, consider um, specific cases by putting in some values. Let us take situation with energy something around 10 keV, which is very small compared to the nucleon mass, and we know from neutron yeah, sorry from studies of the deuteron state we come to a number 35 mev for v0 so this is from deuteron bound states okay now we can put this back in our expression and then let us say we can extract the delta 0 from the earlier expression that we had written down and we can put that back in this um, cross section and it corresponds to something like 4.5 or 4.6 uh, into 10 power minus 24 centimeter square or equal to 4.6 bar. But Experimentally, proton neutron scattering cross section is given to be something like 20 bun for low E values. So, low energy scattering values experimentally gives sigma is equal to about 20. So, what is happening? To understand this, what we do we are to consider the spin dependence of the nuclear force. So, we have the spin states uh, when the nucleon say the neutron comes near the proton 
the total spin of the system uh, depends on the combination the angular momentum combination of the nuclear the spin of the neutron and the spin of the proton and both of these S p and S n are half spin particles and therefore, total spin S can be either 1 or 0. Right? So, we have either a triplet combination or a singlet combination. Singlet zero spin 0 is called singlet because that has only one projection allowed 0 and triplet has three projections plus minus 1 and 0 allowed. So, it has three different uh, z states possible that is why it is called a triplet. Now, uh, such cases supposing we have the total sigma uh, depending on the triplets and singlet let me denote it by sigma t and sigma s respectively and since triplet has three states and singlet has one state okay, we have to also have a multiplicative factor of 3 over 4 an averaging factor there and 1 over 4 here to find the total cross section. Now, what about the what about the value that com we computed? Remember when we computed this we used actually the information from um, obtained from the deuterium bound states and deuterium is uh, sorry deuteron is uh, S is equal to 1 state. So, this gives what we computer is actually sigma t which is equal to about 4.6 bar. Now, we know experimentally sigma is equal to 20 say let us uh, to be more accurate 20.4 bar and these two values put together will also tell us that sigma s is about 67.8 bar. So, we can uh, somewhat understand uh, what is the discrepancy why is this discrepancy coming and then there can be other nucleon um, scattering processes which can actually verify this indeed we will not go into the details of all these things but a um, lot of experiments are consistent with the understanding and that we have from uh, such uh, elementary studies and uh, you should also remember that uh, wa when we uh, solve the scattering uh, problem uh, using the potential which is uh, we use the potential which is very crude uh, approximation of the nuclear potential actual nuclear potential so there will be corrections to that and considering all those aspects we can actually try to understand the nuclear force in a better way. Now, before we conclude let me just uh, suggest some of the questions some of the assign some of the things that you can work out exercises that you can work out. Okay. One thing is I would urge everybody to go through the quantum mechanic is it take a take your favorite quantum mechanics textbook and then go through the scattering theory section on scattering theory. So, quantum mechanics can scattering problem right. So, almost all the books will be dealing with this uh, some in detail more detail than the other. So, you take you, the book that you think is best and read through that and understand the cross section problem, a scattering problem uh, sc uh, how to analyze a scattering process. Okay. In uh, so, that will give a better understanding of today's discussion and another thing that we did not really work out in detail is the uh, current that we considered. So, work out obtain j in equal to h cross k over m absolute value of a square and j s c is equal to h cross a square over m k r square 
sin square delta 0 for problem discussed today. Um, so, this is easy to work out, but some I am leaving it to you to do that. All right, with that we will conclude today's session.